And we are live from the Brojo again for another episode of Fanime. We are back from hiatus, everybody. I am uh, Kian. I'm Max. And today we're going to be talking about a new anime. We're I think we're going to do this every week now uh, because the fall anime season has begun. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of episodes each, uh, each week of a certain an fall anime. Mm -hmm. This time it so happened to be the new fall anime, Black Clover. Uh, beforehand, we just have a few things we need to do, and uh, one of them is news, but uh, one of them is to talk about something that recently happened. Um, we are just going to have a quick little brief moment of silence for our ro, our, our ro bro, Jesse Brewsteris, who Sunday night, uh, Sunday morning actually, passed away. Um, um, he was, he was very, uh... He was very behind the scenes for a lot of it, but he was part of the the takedown breakdown and the tournament of blood, which I'm hoping will finish. We'll be able to finish for him for his legacy. Mm -hmm. But um, it it it's, it is with a heavy heart for me to uh, have to bring the news up in general. Um, I waited for a while because uh, it, it 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 has hit me pretty hard. Um, but, uh, you know, I look at it like this. Uh, he really loved podcasting. He really loved doing this. So this is why, why we're going to keep, keep plowing through. So just, we're just going to have a quick moment of silence for Jesse. All right. Thank, thank you guys for listening and just tuning in. Um, at the bottom of the link below, though, um, we will have his GoFundMe link for his family to uh, help pay for his funeral. Um, if you guys are listeners and you really enjoy us, um, this is one of the times where it would be helpful just to like, you know, spread the love and like help, help, help his family out. Cause the dude deserves it. Right. I, um, it, it, oh man, it, it, it is again with a heavy heart that I had to, had to bring this up. Um, you know, I, I don't want to start any podcast and unfortunately our next few podcasts are going to start out like this because... Like I said, he was a really big part of the the Roshan Bros family. He did a lot of things in 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 the background on the website and everything like that. So it, it just you know send him some love, mm -hmm. send your vi good vibes out there, internet, because um, I think we really need it right now. Yeah. So on to uh, some uh, anime news. <laughs> Sorry, um, Max. You like that one punch man feller, don't you? Saitama himself? No. No, okay. Did you, you know, <laughs> this, this, Saitama isn't the only thing created by this guy. Yeah. Uh, you have heard of Mob Psycho 100. Yes. Um, I remember you and I sat there for five hours watching the five entire hours, series. Yeah, we watched the whole series, series. in one sitting. Um, you know, they uh, in the in, they they were for 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 a while now. Um, they have been teasing. A uh, what's gonna happen next with Mob Psycho? And everyone implied it was going to be a uh, Mob Psycho season two. Yeah. But surprise on us, it's actually <gasps> Mob Psycho the live action series. Whoa! And it's also going to be funded by Netflix. Which I'm actually okay with because Netflix seems to have a decent amount of money backing their shit recently. For um, no I... reason. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's let's all take a minute, Max. Let's all take a minute to remember that Netflix also anime-oriented <laughs> stuff that they created. Yeah, they've made some really bad shit. Um, I understand this. They, uh, people, if you, if you don't know, Netflix, uh, anime-wise, had uh, created uh, the live-action Death Note movie. Um, yeah, in case you were all unaware of what Netflix has Netflix done. Netflix has made. Um, we actually have a very nice, polished review of that Death Note movie. Down in our link below if you want to listen to that. Don't do it. it it's really funny. It's just hate. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really hate, but it, I think it's a very reasonable amount of hate. Yeah. Comparatively, um, the only thing that the Death Note, good thing the Death Note movie did was probably make people watch the original Death Note to realize how big of a piece of shit this movie was. Right. Um, but also... Max is like it's got a decent amount of budget. The last other quote unquote anime thing that Netflix gave us was in fact Neo Yokio. <laughs> and uh I know that you're trying to be positive about this, Max. 
But I, you and I both watched Neo Yokio, all six fucking episodes. All three hours of torture. And, uh, because it's a Japanese production company as well, I'm going to give it a little bit more benefit of the doubt. But at the same time, like, there has only been a rare few live action anime things that have, like, turned out really well. Right. Like... Like, everyone has always said, like, their first live-action Death Note movie was really good. I thought that movie was shit, too. Yeah, and, like, it was not all that good. John, John is an avid hater of anything live-action in <laughs> anime. Like, you, you, have, you have listened to John say it on any other podcast. Yep. And, like, I was tempted to ask John if he heard about this, but I don't think John reads Mob or watches Mob, so... He does not last but, uh, heard. Just to bring up, like, other live-action productions that, like, people have ruined. Like, we had Ghosts in the Shell this year. Oh, my God. That, uh, was not bad, but not good. Not bad, my but ass. not good. But, and then another live-action, like, if we want to just bring up more live-action anime adaptations that we've had, I'm going to count Avatar The Last Airbender into this. And, <laughs> oh, man, that was such a piece of garbage movie. That Made was. by an Indian dude who was kind of Asian. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and then we have to go... It has been... It came out in 2007. Uh, the abysmal uh, Dragon Ball Evolution movie. Do we have to talk about that? Ah, uh, you know. I don't... Like, Alright. So, as much as I hate on Death Note, I actually like Dragon Ball Evolution a lot more than I like Death Note. Well, yeah. But, like, I mean, mine is a social bias... Like, I know that movie is shit, but, like, I have fun with it. But, like, with all this, like, this, this, the idea of making it, like, we even have a, uh, fan anime about live, live action adaptations, is that it can probably be good, like, the Ramoni Kenshin movie was awesome, mm -hmm. or you could get an Attack on Titan. Uh, once again, I don't like Attack on Titan live action or non-live action. But uh, right. I have been told the Assassination Classroom uh, live action movie was really good. Um, was it? I, that one's actually one I was thinking about watching, but I wanted to know. That that is what I've heard. Okay. Um, I mean, comparatively, I don't know. Like, there's not. It's really hard to compare. Like, because like I said, we have Blood, The Last Vampire, which was a fucking terrible <laughs> adaptation, and that, that even was... had a Japanese cast too. So like, you can't always like. I have to keep explaining this. Like, you can't always rely on just because it has a Japanese cast, it's going to be good. Right. I've beaten this in the dead horse. Uh, Tom Cruise's Live, Die, and Repeat Whoa. is a really good anime adaptation of a light novel. Right. But it doesn't mean, like, just because it has Hollywood on it doesn't mean it's always going to genuinely be bad. It just so happens Hollywood doesn't know how to take Japanese properties a lot. And make them into something different without making it too different. Right. But because it's a Japanese produced company, I hope that they can like steer it the right way. But I'm not really um, gonna hype it up, unfortunately. Like, um, I really like the first season of Mob Psycho. I think Mob Psycho is one of the most interesting animes that I've seen in a while. Um, right, especially from who made it and where it came from. Like that. That was. That was something that made me happy. To me, it was a breath of fresh air after One Punch Man. Like, because I did, like, as Max knows, Max knows me, I don't like One Punch Man. I think One Punch Man is a terrible anime and manga. Oh, yeah, it was pretty bad. I, I don't like it at all. And um, the way he portrays Bob as being this overpowered character is much more, like, understanding than Saitama. In my opinion. Mm-hmm. So, that's why I enjoy Mob Psycho more than I like uh, One Punch Man. But now into our main thing, uh, we are going to be talking about the first four episodes of Black Clover. So, to get the idea of Black Clover, um, let's just start out when it, it started out in uh, 2015 uh, as a manga in Shonen Jump. And Max knows how much I love my Shonen. Yeah, yeah, you do. I do really like Shonen. It is uh, was created by... Uh, I'm going to screw up his name. Yeah, you are. Uh, Yuki Tabata. Yeah, it's like Yuki Tabata. Yeah, that's close And uh, the uh, the plot is simple. Asa and Yuna are orphans 
who were raised together from birth after being abandoned at a church orphanage on the outskirts of the Clover Kingdom. At the same time, in the world where everyone has natural ability to perform a kind of magic or magical power, Asta is the only person born without any, leading him to train physically as compensation. Conversely, Yuno was born as a prodigy with immense magical power. And uh, so we'll just go into it. Um, their goal is to become Hokage. Basically. I'm kidding. It's to become the Wizard King, which is equivalent to the Hokage. Um, Max made this point. He he makes the joke that it, <laughs> Asta is basically Naruto with gray hair. <laughs> yeah. And he's not wrong to a, and can, to a extent. But I think this these characters are a lot more interesting than the characters in Naruto. Um, Erbo, Ergo, um, their rivalry is very different than Sasuke and Naruto's because they actually genuinely like each other, whereas Sasuke was like, get the fuck away from me, you know? Mm-hmm. But we'll, we'll go into the first couple, of, like we said, we're going to go into the first couple of episodes, and, well... The first episode is, the first four episodes are, well, the first three episodes are basically the same episode. Basically. Repeated. Um, so the first episode, uh, it opens with Asa and Yuno as babies. Mm-hmm. And uh, the priest is like, oh my god, what are your kids' names? And he sees that Yuno has a pendant and Asta just headbutts him. Yep. And then it jumps 15 years into the future and, uh... They are now teenagers with magical abilities, but Asta still has none, comparatively to the little or other little orphan kids that can like shoot fire and wind and shit. Um, so, in the beginning, you kind of think that Yuno doesn't like Asta at all. Like you think that like <coughs> Yuno just is like, get the fuck away from me, Asta. You're not. You don't. I don't. I don't like you. And then you like. It progresses later on that it was just a ruse. and uh, But just going with the first episode, they're going to the palace to get their grimoire. And, like, everyone is getting a grimoire book, and Asta's just waiting. Because, like, the idea is because Asta doesn't have magic now, the grimoire will unlock his true potential. And at the time, Asta does not get a grimoire. So, with that in mind, like, Asta is, Asta is heartbroken. He's unable to do any of this kind of thing. And because of it, like, he he disappears and he just realizes that he's, he, he thinks he's basically useless. So he goes and he, what he does is just, like I said, he physic to counteract that he doesn't have magic, Asta physically trains his body doing up to a thousand handstand pushups a day, a thousand sit-ups, a thousand punches, basically doing like a one-man punch style of thing where it's just body aesthetics which is i think one one of the most super interesting things that i've seen lately in any series um that is very different and i make this joke to max continuously about asta's body like that is not a that isn't human for a 15 year old to have like be swole as this and like where's the medieval child services and shit on this um but it, like I said, it's very, it, like I said, the first episode is very just character building of like Asta sees that Yuno gets this mythical four leaf clover, which is like the greatest big like luck you could think of. And then like Asta gets nothing. Mm-hmm. Then it jumps into these like two rich dudes like, hey, screw you, peasant kid, attack. And, uh, and Yuno's just like, nope. <laughs> right. All of it stopped. Then all of a sudden, this crazy, like, former magic knight is like, yo, if I kill you and do this, I'll be awesome. And he looks like he has, you know, on the ropes, and then Asta comes in and protects him. Yep. And Asta then gets the shit kicked out of him. And I th- I th- said to uh, Max, the interesting thing about the bad guy that they're fighting, he has creation magic that creates chains that null magic. Right. So I think that's the coolest thing, that was, was a cool ability to have. And, like, as this is all going down, um, Asta, in front of him, gets a grimoire created right in front of him. But the one thing is, is there's a five-leaf clover instead of four. So you find out the fourth-leaf clover, fourth-leaf is about 
power and magic and luck. Four and is the, for four is for luck. Yes. And five is for a demon, demon. that resides in it. All right. So uh, I watched the first episode on a, an illegal website. Uh, the book does not magically appear in front of him. It's actually ripped out of the wall. It was, like, built into the wall of the Grimoire Tower. Right. So, like... You know what I mean. I wasn't yeah, sorry. Yeah. Just so so that they don't see that. But, yeah. In the Crunchyroll version, the book just kind of is there. But, like, yeah. Just just per se. All right. I, I get that. Like, you know what I... I, I, I tried to make it, like... It just pops up. Yeah, like, you know it, just it just shows up. Pops like, up. He, he, he's, like, struggling and fighting this dude, and then all of a sudden, book like, I got you. And then it jumps into him grabbing the sword out of the uh, Grimoire, and that's the end of the first episode. Right. And you would think the second episode would lead to the outcome of what happened in the first episode. Nope. But it's actually a flashback of the boys when they were five. Yep. And that um, the flashback for the boys is very interesting to me because, like, it sets up why you know is you know and why Asta is Asta. You know wants to be, like, you know wants to be, at that time, wanted to be as strong as Asta because of the fact that Asta saved, took, got the pendant that you know had as a baby mm-hmm. back to him. So it made, they all ple- they both pledged that promise. So, that is basically episode two is the flashback of their yeah. childhood. The entire episode is a flashback. Which is a little annoying, but, like, not bad, I it guess. It was nice pretense, but, like, if we could have chopped it up a little bit and, like, shoved it in the first three episodes, it would been, like, nice! Yeah. Yeah, and you know, like I said, it, it, was, it was not, like, the worst, but it was, it could have been a little bit different. Um, then it goes to episode three, where you finally see what happens. He's like, hey Right. Takes him down, and then the pastor is talking to Chinese Gandalf about <laughs> the exams. Chinese Gandalf? He's Chinese Gandalf. He's Japanese Gandalf. He really he is. He really is. He's like, like if you, when you watch the series, you'll notice Japanese Gandalf. Yeah. And he's like, do you really want Austin to do it? Austin said he wanted to do it. But but really, like, <laughs> do you do, come Come on. He's like, but Austin said he'd like to do this. And the priest is like, I mean, yeah. Like, if I say I want to do heroin, would you want me to do it? Oh, no. Exactly. Right. See? See the shit that you're saying? Japanese Gandalf? It makes no sense. (laughs) Japanese Gandalf was kind of just like, he wants to do it. Let him go. He wants to do it. And then he's like... Well, technically, the other two that I really wanted to do it didn't want to do it anymore. So, so I kind of like, need him to do I it. I kind of need him to, like, be there for our village. Right. So they go into this montage journey where it's basically Asta's, like, doing things and you know is, like, one-upping him all the time. Like, all the time. <laughs> They're breaking rocks. You right. know one-ups him. Right. They're catching fish. You know one-ups him. They're trying to find the direction to Foggy Place. You know what up, Zim. Basically, Asta feels like shit this entire time. Right. Which I would feel like shit, too, if my friend Little kept bit. doing that shit to me. Little so bit. So, then you get into uh, the Clover Kingdom, which, uh, this is where I'm gonna go, and Max will know that um, I've been working on why I find My Hero Academia to be a breath of fresh air mm-hmm. in the shonen anime world. Um, I also find Black Clover to be a breath of fresh air with the world itself. I, not Right now, not from the characters, but from the world itself. Is that, like in My Hero Academia, everyone technically has a magic ability. Technically. And, but it's not, they're not all used for, like, battle magic and right. shit like that. Like, wind people are, like, farmers that use wind to, like, cut their fruits and, like, Flame users use it to roast pigs, and for some reason the dude is using water magic to make a square puddle filled with fish. Yeah, he was just walking down the road like, with fish bubble. I was like, to oh, me, no. Like, personally to me, I find this to be super interesting. Like, I think that's an awesome thing to have. Is that, like, your world... Like, let's take fairy tale because we're talking about magic worlds in shonen anime. Fairy tale only certain people can become mages. Yeah. And the rest are just normal people. They're just normal people. These yeah. people have an affinity of magic, 
but certain people have high magic use mm-hmm. and certain people have low magic use. I find that to be super interesting to have in a world because then that means like not everyone is everyone has powers but they're not on equal ground, which is a breath of fresh air to me instead of like I have a power I can take you down ha 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 ha. Like everyone has a possibility of using their magic for something. Right. Unless you're Asta. Fuck then, Asta, then I screw guess. you, I guess. Yeah. So then it goes into they're getting ready for the magic exam exam and uh, one of the funniest scenes is that these like magic birds flock to you if you have no magic. <laughs> the and... l- the less your magic, the more birds you get. <laughs> Asta just walks in, and, like, for about 45 seconds, they're not showing his upper body, and you just see him, like, struggle and walking up to, you know, that pans out. Dude's, like, covered in birds. They're, like, eating his face. And he runs into <laughs> oh, the God. leader of the Black Bull Squad, Yami Tsukihiro, and uh, he's, like, become one of my favorite characters. He's this bulky dude that looks like he just doesn't give a shit smoking a cigarette. Yeah, dude's just standing there in the middle for no reason. And then you find out you find out the different squads, which is super interesting to me. Like I said, the Black Bull Squad is like this, like, they're the misfit squad that really, you know... The way they introduce them is the damages cost more than the problems they solve. Right, so they're basically <laughs> fairy tale. Yeah. And uh, they have a Marilyn Manson looking... <laughs> Right. Not, Nazi Marilyn Manson is right. Nazi Maxson, Marilyn yeah. Manson, yeah. Who has, like, no, like, like happiness in him and is super awkward. So, like, they are the Misfit Squad. Then you have the Golden Dawn Squad. <laughs> Let, um, they're, they're, like, all these magic squads are very different. You have the Crimson Lion Squad, the Silver Eagle Squad, the Green Praying Mantis Squad with Jack the Ripper. Right, Jack the Ripper as their leader, and you're like, all right. The Blue Rose Squad, the Purple Orca Squad, the Misty Blue Deer Squad, which, um, funny enough, they're actually called Aqua Blue in the anime, hmm. and the Coral Peacock Squad. Um, the thing about this is, is that, like, I, all the squads look very different, and that's what I like about them. Yeah. They're not all the same, but with different changing cloaks. Like, each one of them is probably <laughs> based in something certain and different. Yeah, they all probably have a premise behind them. Right. Like, um, so I find that super interesting. And what you also find out is that there's Nolia Silva. Uh, she is a member of the Holy Family, and uh, she is disowned by her family from what it looks like. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh... Comparatively to, you know, and one of the leaders, uh, uh, Nozel Silva, the leader of the Silver Eagle Squad, does, says, states that right away in the magic exam. Yeah, basically he just tells her you're useless, you, th- there's no reason for you to be here. Right, and you shouldn't live, and you're like, god damn, dude, that's fucking harsh. And, uh, so then we get into, uh, Asta meets a so-called rival who is kind of a, just a... Like, kind of just a straight up dick. Kind of just straight up dick. And then they go into the like, the, let's go to our s- preliminary rounds. And you're just like, okay, what's the first one? Use a broom. Your magic will let you fly. And Asta <laughs> fails that. Fail. Creation blast magic. Asta fails that. Creation magic. Asta fails that. And then it goes into what Asta is going to be really good at, which is battle magic. <laughs> Fight me. You Asta's can use, like, I... <laughs> you can use your grimoire. Asta, who has not passed any test or exam so far... Right. ...is, like, begging for someone to fight him. And then this dude's like, I'll fight you! And he's like, all right, let's do it! And this dude basically calls... He, Asta, who is Asta, and being, like, your typical shonen anime protagonist, say, Do your best! We can do our best together, because we're friends! Let's go! Team! I'm gonna become Hokage! I mean, Wizard King! Lol... He's like, no, 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 I'm just here to do it for fun, I'm just here not to work, this is what being a ma- magical knight's about. Right. And he creates this, like, cannon aura around him, and he's just mocking Asta, and Asta takes his sword, breaks the cannon, smashes him down, wins the fight right away. Like, one hit, the fight lasts about 45 seconds. And he makes the point, he's like, this isn't what being a magical knight is about at all, the- magical knights work hard, and I'm gonna work my hardest. And that's the end of all the four first four episodes we saw. No! I really actually enjoyed this series a lot. Um, 
from what I've seen, and my friend Megan has actually asked me to read the manga, but I have so much on my plate with, like, movies and movie news and video game stuff. Movies and movies, movies and, and movies, movies and, and, TV movies. and TV shows and, like, things I want to, mm. like, munch on. Um, I, she, she, for the past, like, couple of months, she's like, you should check out Black Clover. And I'm like, all right, I'll give it a chance, whatever. And I finally wa- just watched I was like, oh, I just didn't watch, read the manga. I'll just watch the anime when it comes out. And I'm like, I really enjoy this. Right. Like, I understand why in the shonen manga, this is, this is how weird I am before I go into it. I understand the shonen manga popularity post that, uh, My Hero and Black Clover are neck and neck every month. I can, I can understand that. Because As Black Clover is going on, I'm getting more and more psyched for it. It's an interesting concept. Like I said, I like the world. I like the characters in it. Oh, yeah. I don't... None of the characters to me at the moment seem very bland. And that's like... And I'm like I said, I'm making a video for My Hero. Is That's the reason why I like My Hero. Like, all these characters shouldn't fit, but they fit really well within mm-hmm. the series. Like, that's the thing that, like... Immediately, I fell in love with the Black Bull Squad because they look nothing like like the, all the all the Royal Knight, all the Magic Knight squads look very different and very their own thing. So like it immediately caught my eye, and like I said, the world itself like I love the idea that everyone has magic, but they don't use it for just magic attack. Right. They use it for like normal everyday use. Right. Like most. A vast majority of people are utilizing their stuff for just day-to-day means. Like, right. People hardly do manual labor labor anymore. It's now... Wind magic, magic. to plow the fields and things yeah, like that. Yeah, like water magic, you're watering your fields when it's dry out. Like fire magic, they're literally like starting a fire to cook stuff. Right. And see, like, I think that's super interesting to me. I don't... I. I... I really have high hopes for it. I, I'm giving this a... I'm going to watch it every week, probably... Um, so, uh, what, what do you think about it? What's your... Oh, I like it. I'm watching it. Right, good. Like, so, um, like I said, every week we're going to be doing this. We're going to plow through some fall animes, and then Mm -hmm. we'll probably do a fall finale, just big episode where we watched all the finales of each and then talk about how we felt, because each episode is 13 episodes for a fall season. So we'll do, we'll do our final thoughts for everyone, like we did our first thoughts for everyone. Because, mm-hmm. like, we're, we'll do that. Like, every anime is going to, every fall anime that we talked about in a fall anime thing, we'll have this first thought and then a final thought. So, next week is going to be my thing I was excited about Ancient Mega's Bride. Uh, I want to watch this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Um, also, again, like I said, it would be really cool of you to. Go support Jesse's family yeah. at the GoFundMe page down in the link below. I'm Kian. I'm Max. Thank you. Have a good day. Woo.